Thank you for choosing Apollo Motorhome Holidays for your self-drive adventure. This presentation is designed to help you get the most from your Apollo experience. Before we demonstrate how your RV works, there are a few essentials you should know about driving an Apollo vehicle. Apollo vehicles have been engineered for an easy driving experience. However, RVs are much taller and wider than the average family car, and as such, should be driven with extra care. Take extra care when approaching bridges and tunnels, and be aware of low-hanging tree limbs. Avoid drive-throughs and undercover car parks. Always use truck lanes, especially at toll booths. Remember your vehicle has extended mirrors as well. You will notice that the driver's cabin is set up a little differently than a car. Various driver controls may be positioned differently. Take some time to familiarise yourself with these before leaving the Apollo branch. Your Apollo RV is packed with many features designed to make your touring holiday more enjoyable. This presentation will show you how to operate your RV. Before departing, you should run through the following checklist to ensure a safe and trouble-free journey. Make sure the living quarters are safe to travel. Ensure all appliances and kitchen items are stowed and all storage compartments are closed. Check that all windows and doors have been securely locked, all roof vents are closed and the TV antenna has been retracted. Make sure your RV has been completely disconnected from your campsite and all outside compartments are closed and locked to prevent them opening while in motion. Ensure the slide outs have been drawn in. Visually scout the area and plan your exit, taking note of any obstacles such as low-lying tree limbs or obstacles on the ground. Returning to your driver's cabin, make sure you have adjusted all the mirrors, your seat position, the stereo and the air conditioning. It is important that you are not distracted when driving your RV. Finally, make sure that you and all of your passengers are wearing their seat belts. In the United States, vehicles drive on the right side of the road. Stay in the furthest right lane to allow faster vehicles to overtake. Take extra care when turning at traffic lights to avoid ending up in the path of oncoming traffic. Allow extra space between your vehicle and the other road users, especially when braking. RVs are naturally heavy and need more time to slow down. Be careful with the tail swing. This is how many accidents happen. Make sure that your rear wheel has cleared, then slowly start to turn. While traveling down a steep incline, it's advisable to turn off the transmission overdrive. If needed, you may also downshift to a lower gear. We will now take you through your RV and demonstrate how each area works. To gain easier access to the living quarters of your camper, Use the exterior step. The step will automatically extend when you open the door and will retract when you close the door. If you would like to leave the step out, there is a switch as you enter the RV that will allow the step to remain out even when you open and close the door. Be aware that turning on the ignition will cause the step to retract. There are two locks on the door, a deadbolt and a door lock. The top lock is usually the deadbolt and opened with the larger key. The bottom lock is usually the door lock and opened by the round key with a black plastic coating. Use the RV's stabilizing legs to lift the motorhome and make it level. The controls are located to the left of the driver's seat. Ensure the engine is still running and the parking brake is engaged. Turn the device on and press auto. The process will take a few minutes. Once you see the green power gear level flashing, the process is complete. Make sure you turn the system off before turning the engine off or the motorhome will drop. To retract the system safely, ensure the engine is running, parking brake is engaged, turn the system on and press the retract all jacks button. Apollo vehicles operate on auxiliary 12 volt battery systems which power internal appliances such as fridge, lights and water pump. The switch for the auxiliary battery is located at the control panel. The auxiliary battery switch must remain on at all times during your self-drive holiday. 
The battery system will provide power for between 12 and 20 hours when fully charged, depending on use. To test the level of the batteries, go to the control panel in the driver's console. Hold down the switch to find the battery's remaining charge. At full charge, the battery should be around 14 volts. The batteries recharge in three ways. When you drive the RV, connected to mains power, or when the generator is running. Idling the engine won't provide enough power to recharge the batteries. Try to reduce battery consumption by turning off all unnecessary lights and appliances. All vehicles can be connected to the 110 volt mains power via the supplied 30 amp extension lead. Most RV park circuits are rated at 30 amps. Make sure you have a 15 amp adapter when you leave the Apollo branch. When you are connected, all equipment automatically runs on mains power rather than the battery. Appliances such as the microwave, rear air conditioning and power points only run on mains power. The mains power system is protected by a circuit breaker. Ensure that this switch is always in the on position. If the circuit breaker trips, turn off all appliances and reset it by switching it back on and turning on your appliances. If it trips again, disconnect the mains power cord or turn off the generator. Cycle all breakers off and on. Plug the power cord back into the mains power or run the generator. Turn on your appliances one at a time until you identify the problem device. Then contact your Apollo branch where you picked up your vehicle from. The control panel is where you'll find the hot water system switch, the EMS panel, auxiliary and main battery switches, air conditioning controls, and front slide-out controls. Turn the hot water heater on to start heating water. Allow about 10 minutes to heat enough water for the sink and allow about 20 minutes to have a shower. The EMS display on the control panel will show you how many amps your vehicle is drawing from the generator. Do not load the generator up with more than 30 amps or the circuit breaker on the generator will trip. There are two separate heating systems in the Elite. Zone 1 is the driver's cabin and Zone 2 is the living area. Select the desired zone you wish to alter. Your motorhome has the added feature of slide-out room extensions. To operate, the engine must be running, the park brake engaged and the vehicle must be level. Simply hold the switch to the out position until the slide out has been fully extended. Ensure there is enough clearance outside the vehicle before operating the slide out. Always be sure to retract the slide outs before moving your motorhome. The control panel in the driver's console is where you'll test the levels of the black water, grey water, and fresh water tanks, as well as the propane tank. By holding down the tank test button, the lights will indicate whether the levels are good or not. You will also test the battery levels here. Hold down the switch to find the battery's remaining charge. The generator start button is located in the driver's console. Hold down the starter button until you hear the generator start. The auxiliary battery must be on to start the generator and your fuel tank must be over a quarter of a tank. The generator produces 110 volts for the air conditioner, microwave and any electrical devices you may plug into a power outlet. The generator runs on fuel from the fuel tank. Make sure the manual reset circuit breaker is on. The generator may be running, but no electricity will be going through. A secondary starter switch is located on the generator itself. If the starter switch at the control panel is not working, you should try the secondary switch. Make sure that the air conditioner is off before starting the generator. If it is on, there may be too much of an electrical load for the generator to handle. Never run the generator while sleeping. Remember, do not load the generator up with more than 30 amps. Your vehicle has several power outlets that will deliver 110 volts when connected to city power or with the generator running. Some are protected by GFI circuit breakers usually located next to water sources, 
such as the kitchen sink and lavatory. The LPG system, commonly referred to as propane, provides gas for the stove, water heater, internal heating systems and three-way fridges where fitted. To turn the LPG system on, simply turn the valve in an anti-clockwise direction. Leave the LPG on while driving to keep your refrigerator operational. Please note the gauge on the LPG tank will read 3 quarters full and the monitor will read full. This is normal. Only use LPG intended for gas appliances and always refill at certified LPG refilling stations. Your vehicle is equipped with an LPG detector. These detectors are very sensitive. Aerosols, room deodorizers and perfumes can set them off. If the alarm sounds and you are not using any propane appliances, don't be alarmed. If the detector has picked up a migrant fume, it will shut itself off. If it continues to sound, go outside and leave the cabin door open. Turn the propane off at the tank. Wait 5 to 10 minutes, then if the alarm is still sounding, call the roadside assistance number. There are also carbon monoxide detectors and smoke detectors in your RV. If you cook without opening the windows and using the range hood, you may set these alarms off. The alarm will beep when the battery becomes low. The battery will need to be replaced at this time. Always open windows and vents before operating gas appliances, but beware of drafts extinguishing the flame. Familiarise yourself with emergency procedures and fire extinguisher location, making sure you know what to do in case of a gas leak or fire. To operate the stovetop, push and turn the hot plate dial to light, then turn the igniter dial until the LPG ignites. Always use the range hood when cooking in your RV to disperse the smoke and heat. To operate the oven, you need to ignite the pilot light. Turn and push the oven dial and hold it in while you ignite the pilot light with the provided lighter. This must be done each time you use the oven. Once alight, turn the dial to the desired temperature. Always turn the oven off when it's not in use. The stove should never be used for internal heating or while the vehicle is in motion. Your refrigerator operates on both propane and electricity. It should always be on the auto setting. Therefore, when you're not plugged into city power or running the generator, your refrigerator will keep your food cold. Adjust your thermostat slider to the desired temperature. The check light will sometimes flash on if you're out of propane, the propane is not turned on, or if your vehicle is not level. Make sure you rectify these issues, then reset the check light by turning the refrigerator off and then back on. Remember, if the vehicle is not level, this could cause the check light to go on and stop your refrigerator from cooling. Always try and keep your RV as level as possible. To operate the microwave, your vehicle must be connected to mains power or have the generator running. To convert the sofa bed into a full-size bed, simply pull the back of the sofa towards you and extend the legs out until they reach the ground. This will form the base on which to lay the provided air mattress. To inflate, plug the pump in and turn the dial to inflate. Then turn the pump on. Once the air mattress has been filled to the desired level, turn the pump off. To convert a dinette lounge into a full-size bed, First remove the cushions to allow the tabletop easy access. Release the table locking lever and slide the tabletop down to form the base of the bed. Lock the table into the lower position and then arrange the cushions to form the full bed mattress. The seats in the Elite can rotate to face the living quarters to give you two extra seats. Use the controls on the seats to rotate and extend the legs for added comfort. Your television and DVD player operates on 110 volt mains power. Television reception will vary depending on your location, but always extend the antenna to get the best reception. Always remember to retract the antenna before moving your vehicle. 
Both the television and DVD player have remotes for added convenience. At each new location, you will need to retune the television. Your motorhome can be connected to park cable if the RV park offers a cable outlet. You will need to supply your own cable extension lead. Once connected, retune the television via the cable setting. Use the AV selector to switch between the desired sources, antenna, DVD or cable. There are two panels on the exterior of the vehicle that can get very hot while they are in use. For your own safety, we recommend you stay clear of these when you are using the heater or hot water system. Storage compartments are located on the exterior around the motorhome. We recommend keeping valuables and non-waterproof items inside the vehicle. Your motorhome comes equipped with an outdoor shower. Make sure you've turned the water heating system on well before using the shower. To fill the fresh water tank, unscrew the cap and put the end of the hose directly into the hole. The tank has to vent as you're filling it, so only turn your supply valve halfway. This water is intended for washing up and showering. It's not intended for drinking. You should use bottled water for drinking and cooking. Your vehicle can be connected to city water, which most RV parks accommodate. You must use a water pressure regulator to protect the pipes in your vehicle. Once connected, you must not use the water pump. Your motorhome comes complete with a fully equipped bathroom including vanity basin, shower and toilet. To operate the flush, make sure you're connected to mains water or if not, have the water pump on and then press on the foot pedal. The black water from the toilet and grey water from the shower and sink is collected in holding tanks. The level of the tanks is shown at the control panel. When the tanks are three quarters full, it's time to visit a dump station. The sewer connection and hose are located in the rear compartment. Remove the cap from the termination connection and connect the sewer hose by twisting it to the right. Make sure that the other end of the sewer hose is inserted into the hole at least six inches at the waste station. Once connected, pull the black water valve first. Wait for the black water to drain out and then pull the grey water valve. Remember to make sure that the valves are closed and the cap is securely fastened before leaving the campground. After each dumping, recharge the system with toilet chemicals that deodorise and break down solids in the holding tanks. Your vehicle's fuel gauge displays approximately how much fuel is in the tank when the key is in the on position. A warning light will appear when your RV has reached a critical fuel level. When the warning light comes on, please go to a fuel station as soon as possible. Please ensure you only fill your vehicle with unleaded fuel, 89 octane or above. The ignition should be turned to the off position while the vehicle is being refueled. Always turn off all propane gas appliances before refueling. There is an emergency start switch located to the left of the steering wheel. If your battery is low and your vehicle will not start, hold it down and start your engine. The park brake is located on the floor and is operated with your foot. We recommend setting the brake every time you park the vehicle. To release the park brake, simply pull the lever in the panel to disengage. To access your vehicle's engine, Release the two locks and lower the engine hood. Every 300 miles, check the level of engine oil and coolant and fill up when required. Only use water to top up your coolant. If you think your transmission oil or brake fluid needs attention, please contact our customer service centre on the number found on your key tag. Most of Apollo's motorhomes are equipped with a reversing camera. When you put the vehicle into reverse gear, the camera automatically comes on to assist in seeing objects behind the motorhome. Most accidents occur when backing up. We recommend you always have someone to the side of the driver's or passenger's rear corner of the vehicle, who you can see in the rear vision mirror, to direct you appropriately.
A spare tyre is in your motorhome, however for your own safety we do not recommend that you change the tyre yourself. Always check the pressure of each tyre on your vehicle when refuelling. Regularly check the condition of each tyre and in the event of any damage, please contact Apollo's Customer Service Centre. The phone number is located on your vehicle key tag. To operate your RV's awning, firstly unlock the black tabs on the awning arms. Use the awning hook to release the awning. Use the hook again to pull the black strap towards you until you have fully extended the awning arm. Undo the leg and place it in the arm socket. Do the same on the other side. Slide the extension to raise the awning arm to the desired height and lock into place. Make sure you stow away your awning when you leave your campsite and each night before bed to avoid weather damage. If you are involved in an accident, please call the customer service department immediately and provide all details including location, police report, injuries and any other information requested by the representative. You will also need to complete the collision report form found in your travel wallet. Please call the Apollo branch that you picked up your vehicle from and inform them of your situation. After you've enjoyed your self-drive adventure, please return the vehicle on the contracted date and time. If you wish to amend the drop-off date or time, please contact your pickup location for authorization to extend. Before you return your vehicle, please ensure the RV is in the same condition as when it left. Remember to remove all food items from the fridge, make sure all your cutlery, crockery, cooking utensils and equipment are clean and packed away. Remove all your possessions from storage cupboards and take all rubbish items out of the vehicle with you. Ensure the vehicle has been returned with a full tank of fuel unless you have purchased prepaid fuel. Remember to dump and clean out the grey and black holding tanks before returning the vehicle. We encourage you to adopt safe and environmentally responsible habits throughout your holiday, such as appropriate waste disposal and refraining from smoking in your RV. All Apollo vehicles are non-smoking. Above all, take a little extra care and you will enjoy a safe and happy Apollo holiday. You are entitled to discounts at various RV parks and activities throughout the United States. Check your Apollo welcome pack for more information.